So many people are using the wrong wrist movement in badminton, causing them to lose power, control, consistency, deception, and also at times actually cause some pain. But what if we told you that the solution to this doesn't come from your wrist at all? Yeah, instead, it actually comes mostly from your fingers and thumb. So in this video, we're going to share why your wrist isn't as important as you might think, why your fingers and thumb are important, and crucially, how you can use them to improve these areas of your game. Let's start with an example. Imagine writing just using your wrist rather than actively using your fingers. Well, this is essentially what a lot of players are doing on court. Playing badminton, like writing, becomes much easier when you use your fingers and thumb. So firstly, let's talk about generating power, as this is perhaps what a lot of you are most concerned about. For example, in your backhand lift or drive, bringing your wrist back like this and then snapping it forwards isn't actually what generates the power and it's probably giving a lot of you wrist injuries. Sure, you need to use your wrist a little, but by keeping your wrist much flatter, you can use your thumb to squeeze against a wide part of the grip and accelerate into the shot. By keeping your wrist flatter and squeezing your thumb, you can see it also engages your forearm much more, which helps you to add power. Secondly, having the wrong wrist movement or just using your wrist too much hugely decreases both the control and accuracy of your shots. In darts, the difference between hitting a triple 20 or just one comes down to such small, minuscule movements. They're barely using their wrist and relying on their index finger and thumb to create ultimate precision. So in badminton, we need to become experts at using our fingers and thumb to get maximum control and accuracy. Of course, badminton isn't exactly the same as darts, as we're often moving our whole body. But what we found is that generally, the less your whole body is rotating, the more important it is to use your fingers and thumb. And this is because you don't have the momentum of your body rotating into the shot. Take the backhand serve, for example, when you're just stood there and it's literally illegal to move your feet as you hit it. Here, you need to rely on using the squeeze of your fingers and thumb to not only add accuracy, but also power into the serve, especially if it's a flick. Now, it's important to mention that you do still need to use your fingers and thumb when you are rotating. For example, when you're smashing or hitting a late backhand, you use your fingers and thumb at the final stage of the shot and this helps your accuracy and power. But your fingers and thumb aren't the main component. Instead, it's the combination of all factors, such as your rotation, footwork, swing speed, and timing. Okay, moving on, players who overuse their wrist really struggle to change between the different grips quickly, especially between a forehand and backhand. Yeah, using your wrist too much means that you have a bigger follow through, and often means that you can't change your grip in time for the next shot. For example, if you hit a forehand drive like this, you then won't have enough time to change into a backhand grip, so you have to stay in the forehand grip, and you then need to use your wrist to create any power in the shot, rather than using your thumb. I'm sure we've all seen players who do this, and you might be one of them, but don't worry, we're about to give you some solutions which will hopefully resolve this problem. Yes, yeah, so in general, the more you use your fingers and thumb, the better you can change between the grips, and this will therefore help your power, control, accuracy, and of course, your consistency. But how do you actually use your fingers and thumb? Well, let's move on to that now. Firstly, we need to mention that although we've said fingers and thumb together throughout this video so far, there are actually shots where you don't really use your thumb and it's more just there to create a good grip and ensure you don't drop your racket. However, you do use some finger squeeze in every shot in badminton. This is something the best players do really well whether that's in their overhead shots, using the squeeze to add power and deception at the last moment, or improving the accuracy of their net kills. And what you'll probably notice about the pros, they almost always have a relaxed, loose grip until the shuttle hits their strings. But why is this important? Well, if you have a racket in your hand and we tell you to twist the racket, you'll almost definitely do this by using your fingers and thumb and not your wrist. And this is the quickest way to turn your racket. And you've probably done it by holding the racket lightly and not gripping it tightly. Now doing this brings us on to our four ways to easily practice using your wrist, fingers and thumb correctly. Our first practice can be done at home, so you should have no excuses not to do it. And this is a progression from what we've just shown. So for this, you should have a racket in your hand and you simply practice changing between a forehand and a backhand grip and squeezing to hit a shot. This might seem basic and maybe even boring, but it's a great way to practice not only changing between the different grips, but also keeping your fingers and thumb loose and then squeezing them to recreate that feeling of adding power into the shot. You can do this whilst imagining hitting net kills, drives, lifts, or net shots. Okay, let's go back to the hall. 
Our second practice, again, seems quite simple, but it's so effective. Here, you need a shuttle, and you're going to hit the shuttle up to yourself while seeing how short you can make the swing whilst getting as much height as possible. We'd recommend doing it on the forehand side, then backhand side, and then alternate between the two. This will really encourage you to use your finger squeeze and also your thumb when you do it on the backhand side. As you can see, we're barely using our wrist here. And a key tip is that if you do find yourself reverting back to using your wrist when doing this practice, then don't hit the shuttle as high as this will give you less time and almost force you to use this shorter, more efficient action. Our next practice is on court. And here you want to work on the different shots and skills that you regularly play in badminton. Starting below the height of the net, you can experiment with using your fingers and thumb to generate power and control in your lifts. We know a lot of people struggle on the backhand side in particular. So one way to improve this is to take these three fingers off the racket for the entire duration of the shot. This gets you used to using only your thumb and index finger. And once you can do this, you can add the three fingers back on to help add a little more control. You can also practice your net shots, experimenting with how much you need to squeeze your fingers and thumb to hit a tight net shot from varied positions. It's important to mention that we'd advise doing this practice with some movement. Don't just stand still, as this isn't what you'd be doing in a game. Adding in footwork provides you with momentum that naturally adds some power into your shot, so it's important that you get used to this. Yeah, and hitting your shots with a completely straight arm is another common mistake we see when playing net shots and also mid-court shots. You'd never write with a straight arm or throw a dart with a straight arm. Having a slightly bent arm brings a contact point closer to your core, which is a stronger and more balanced position. This means you can adjust your positioning without disrupting your momentum and you can therefore better control your shot. That's right. So after this, you then want to experiment using your fingers and thumb in the rear court or in other shots above the height of the net. One example is the attacking punch clear, where you might show that you're going to play a drop shot, and then a lot of the deception comes from squeezing your fingers and thumb at the last millisecond. And if you want to watch our entire step-by-step -step tutorial on this shot, we'll link it below. Yeah, and another example is a smash. Experiment with how much and when you need to squeeze your grip, and what you should do with your wrist. Just look at how relaxed Praveen Jordan is in his grip as he's preparing for the smash. Again, we've done an entire tutorial on this, which we'll link below. Our fourth practice is a single shuttle exercise where you have one person at the net tapping the shuttle down to the other person who's defending. This is a great exercise as both people are constantly using the fingers and thumb. And if you're not, then it's not going to work. So for example, if you hit a shot in defense and use your wrist too much, then your racket swing will end here rather than here. And this means you'll have a longer distance to get your racket back into its ready position. And you'll be under more and more pressure and therefore not able to keep the rally going. Not having this floppy wrist is quite hard to do though, especially if you're under a lot of pressure as you don't have much time and you can panic. It's something we still remind ourselves of regularly. So hopefully you now know how using your wrist, fingers and thumb in badminton can help you to generate power, control, consistency, deception and also eliminate any wrist pain. Now we have one final point that's really important if you want to perfect the use of your fingers and thumb, and that is to reach out your index finger and press the like button on this video. For in all seriousness, we hope you've enjoyed this video. We've covered a lot, and we hope that some of you are still watching. If you are, then please leave a hand emoji in the comments below. And lastly, don't forget to smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll hopefully see you on another video very soon. Bye.